Dear listener, Christmas Eve has always had a special place in my heart. The children go to bed early. The streets become empty. There isn't a light on for miles, and often you can stare into the stars. That actually isn't the reason at all why I enjoy it, but I figured that if I painted a warm and cozy scene, you might forget for a brief moment that the majority of my research focuses on the supernatural. The actual reason that I enjoy Christmas Eve is because the veil between worlds often is lifted early to begin celebrating the mingling of souls. And that means a chance to observe paranormal occurrences is heightened. Is this odd? Quite likely. But then again, I don't recall asking for your opinion either. Bloodbath. Most people who work for Thornton and Hewley likely never knew how eccentric or outlandish their CEO was. Jessica Aolin wasn't so lucky. She ran a catering company in the area, and the law office decided to hire her for a Christmas Eve party a few years back. For Jessica, she thought that it would be easy money. There were a lot of people there from all around the entire city. I guess I never realized how many people work for Mr. Dalen. For the event, Dalen had requested a variety of dishes. None of them seemed particularly festive, but I knew it was common for a lot of people to forget the reason for the season. Jessica said that she made only five of the dishes on the list, given that she had been hired at such short notice. I didn't know this at the time, but I was basically sloppy seconds. All the other bigger caterers had already been called and refused. I wish I had known what they knew about Dalen and his company. When she got there to the party, most of the law firm was already drunk. Dalen was requesting that the main dishes be served at the 16th floor conference room, and Jessica had her hands full. It really didn't surprise me to realize that she had no idea what was actually going on there. My research has found that this particular law office was well known for another reason, though. Mr. Dalen had extremely morbid fascinations with the occult. Perhaps it might even have rivaled mine. And before Jessica arrived that evening, the head of the company had requested that all of his senior executives gather at the conference room and begin a supernatural ritual to contact the dead. Yes, Dalen wanted them to perform a seance. He had even hired a medium to make sure the ritual went off without a hitch. Jessica, meanwhile, was walking into this shadowy conference room offering eggnog and warm roast beef, unaware of the fact that her world was about to change forever. As you may or may not be aware, tampering with the unnatural order of the astral plane is dangerous, especially if you don't know what you're doing. The medium hired was only a two-year novice, having mostly gained fame from local small towns, proclaiming details about missing persons and long-lost husbands. The stories were accurate. The ghosts always told the truth. But this sort of seance was something entirely new to her, and the ritual did not go as planned. There was a shudder that shook the entire company, some claimed that it was an earthquake, but I've checked records. No seismic activity could be found that day. What happened over the next few hours, though? Oh, that can't be argued by anyone who lived nearby. The lawyers suddenly became extremely violent towards each other. Jessica said that she was able to serve Mr. Dalen a slice of meatloaf when he started to foam at the mouth. His eyes rolled back, and he sounded like he was possessed. It didn't take a stretch of the imagination to realize that was precisely what was happening. He and his entire board of directors had unwittingly unleashed a swarm of angry spirits. The power went out shortly after this, and these well-dressed businessmen turned on each other without hesitation. 
using everything within reaching distance as a weapon. Jessica showed me a wound where Dalen actually bit her arm, and described to me in detail how others use chairs and fire extinguishers to bash at one another. I stumbled toward the back of the room, where that damn medium was trying to escape and demanded that she help me. She grabbed my arm and... We crawled through the carnage. When they reached the elevator, the two of them were attacked one last time by an accountant. He was spitting angry, toxic fire from his eyes and mouth, every trace of his human appearance melting away. The ghost wanted one final victim. The medium said that she invoked a binding spell, a last-ditch attempt to stop the evil spectral force. Somehow, it worked. They rode to the ground floor and ran to find the nearest phone to contact the police. By the time the authorities had arrived, all of the people in the building had finished slaughtering one another. I came to retrieve my items from my company. It was horrendous. Eyes were scattered on the floor, people mutilated from fingernails, spine tissue dangling on stairs. I've never seen such carnage before. I believe there's more to the story than just a warning of tampering with the unknown. These spirits were angry for a reason. A brief look into the accounting books of the company have told me what may be the answer. The company purchased an entire city not long back. It had fallen on hard times and they needed money, but they didn't take into account an old curse that hadn't been lifted, the medium told me. In case you hadn't realized, she was the same person who assisted me to know what befell Simon and Raoul. Now, it was occurring to me that the ghost stories I thought may not be connected actually had a deeper meaning to one another. The answer was there, at Harbor Bay. Dark forces seemed to have a habit of circling the area. They even followed me. Perhaps because of all that I have uncovered. But still, I must know more. I guess you know where I'll be spending Christmas. If I make it, until then... I mean. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and it's the end of today's video or today's episode of the podcast, which means I want to tell you guys thank you so much for watching. If you guys are looking for some cool Christmas or holiday things, I got books. Hey. The Creepypasta Collection Volume 1 and Volume 2 are available now on Amazon. If you haven't seen those, they're years old, but hey, I uh, might as well talk about them, right? Also, I've done a whole bunch of books for Audible, if you guys are interested in hearing more of my voice. Tales from the Gas Station, Volume 1, 2, and 3 are all available on Audible. And if you use the link in the description down below, I think you can actually get uh, your first month for free. So, that's, that's uh, cool. Give the, give the gift of, of uh, uh, my voice. I want to give a very big thank you to everybody on Patreon, especially... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Brian Arce, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Kraus, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Robert Schonkwiller, USMC, Matt Bach, Jables Raz, Mask Note, Joshua Mullen, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Ben Spates, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Fikamal, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Isodo Hatred, Nessie, Ronnie Hansen, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Willis, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, 
Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. Like I said, I, I cannot thank you guys enough for being a part of this. And that goes to everybody down there in the description and everybody who even can just support for $1. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and sweet dreams.